So, tell us that soccer is here. We want motive in mind to set things rolling, just like with a locomotive. Do you hear this walls coming down? Everybody remembers a teacher. Your good teachers, your bad teachers, the boring teachers, the mean teachers. Everybody remembers a teacher. Now, whether it is that you went to a cream of the crop school or an under the mango tree setup, there is this one particular teacher, this very popular teacher, a teacher that is described as the very best teacher. And I hope that uh, with these few points of mind that I have described, the very famous teacher that we all know to be experience. Now, I argue with the idea that experience is the best teacher because I know that experience can be wasted on an individual because you could either just go through an experience or you could actually grow through an experience. Now, that says to my mind that the power of experience is not in the hand of experience itself, but in the person who has gone through it. All that wisdom to say that uh, I guess I must have succeeded as a student in the class of experience that I have sat up until this point to stand before you on the TED stage today. My name is Zoza Icha and I am the mind behind the Asa Bara brand. <laughs> now, think about what it takes to grow by hand, alone, a whole brand. Anywhere in the world, it's difficult. But think about what it takes to do that here in Nigeria. It is like looking at what is impossible. But uh, my love for the impossible didn't start today. It started many years ago as a teenager getting ready for my senior prom. My sister, um, the one before me, suffered the fate of having her dress sewn by Mama Ugu, and I decided that that wasn't going to happen to me. I wanted to wear a ball gown from America. <laughs> America that I had not seen and never been. And the internet was new in Nigeria, things were slow. It wasn't yet the global village that we are now with all the connectivity to make things easy. It was three weeks to the prom, and that dress would take five weeks to deliver, little did I know. Two days to the prom, I was at the risk of tying my towel to go to my senior year prom, and my mother said, better have sense and go and beg your father to give you more money to be able to buy another dress. And uh, my father, my very wise father, did not allow me to collect that money without telling me that, Zoza, you like difficult things. It is until something is impossible before you are interested in it. Everything he said left my life that very day, but the word impossible. Now, jump forward to my time as a student in ABU, a 200 level student, facing the choice of what arm of industrial design to specialize in. And I heard, ah, textile design is difficult. You will not have a life. The lecturers are somehow, you'll be suffering. And where did Zoza Icha end? In the class of textile design. And it made it even more interesting for me on my first day in class to walk in and find out that I was the only woman in my class. And so I decided that I will be on top, stay on top, and graduate at the top of my class. The time came for when we would um, be going for our CIWES. CIWES at that time was the um, industrial attachment training where you would leave class and go get yourself some field experience. And so I went to Lagos and I attached myself to one baba who was beating Adire and making local textile design. And then on the other hand, I attached myself to interior options a, an interior design company par excellence. ABU was more interested in my getting this experience and I was more interested in getting that experience. When I wasn't there, I was there. And when I wasn't there, I was there. But when I was there, there being interior options, I had access to free internet. I had my own laptop, so I wasn't struggling with anybody for a machine to use. And so while I was free at that, at that place, I would be doing a lot of research for my final year project. Before I left Zaria to go to Lagos, I had the opportunity to see what most other students before me had done. 
And as beautiful and as intricate as all these final year projects were, none of them spoke to me because their destiny was to collect dust in the stores and archives of the Amadubello University. And Zosa was not going to be having that. And so I wanted to create something. I wanted to do something brand new with fabric, something that would outlive me, that would outgrow me and make a way for people coming after me. And that was where I started doing my research to find a way to immortalize fabric, do more with fabric than just wear it or put it on furnishing, which was the limit of what ABU Zaria was teaching. And so I kept on doing my research until I hit my eureka moment. And I was like, this is it. And I was excited to leave Lagos and go back to Zaria and meet my professor and say, Professor Sir, bam, behold, this is my project. And he looks at it and he says, uh, he had these big glasses and he looked at it and he was like, Zosa, this is wonderful. I'm excited for you. Congratulations, but this is impossible. What he didn't know is that when impossible collides with a person like me, what was a lock turns into a key. I said, Professor, sir, he said, mm. I said, sir, please, this is, it has to be this one. And he said, look, see, go away and come back. Think of something else. I know you are a star, but this is a bit too far out. So I leave and I come back in a week with uh, a different envelope and I come into his office and he says, hey, let's see it. And I drop it. Bah! He opens it and it's the same thing. He says, ah, Azusa, but we agreed that we we'll change it. I said, sir, this is the only thing I want to do. And he says, well, but this is going to be so expensive if you can even achieve it. Besides, why are you concerning yourself with such difficult work? You are a woman. And I said, Professor, sir, it is this project or we die here. And he said, if it's like that, I sign. No problem. And so he puts his signature on it. And um, he asks where I was going to display this. Because what my project was, was um, a heroic size sculpture comprised of four angelic figures. And he said, where on earth are you going to put this? And I said, I want it to be on the welcome wall of the Faculty of Arts. And he said, are you out of your mind? Nobody gets that space. Even PhD students have been applying for that space for over 10 years. Nobody gets it. I said, sir, apply for this project and we'll get it. And you know what? We did. And so he runs back to me one day and he says, start work, start work, start work, before they change their mind. And that was there where the building of this sculpture started. Cutting, trimming, pasting, cutting, sculpting. And people would come in and out of the studio because they had heard about this impossible project and they wanted to see what this crazy girl was going to do. February 2009, I took a trip to Abuja. I was on my way coming here, and I arrived in Abuja, quite frankly, but I did not arrive in the way I thought I would. I arrived in the emergency unit of a private hospital. I was in a bed surrounded by loved ones and friends and doctors, and when my eyes opened, they told me I had been involved in an accident earlier, and that it was an accident where seven people were involved, and just two of us came out alive. I was the second person and uh, following that i was told oh you well you need to know what it is you're an adult you're likely not going to walk anymore because you have four compression fractures in the lower part of your spine and two in your neck what that means is that your spinal cord has been crushed in about six places so paralysis is likely to set in as it is now you cannot feel your feet i said yes we're well, running a blade on your body can you feel anything i said no and they said, well, this is what your life is going to be, unless, of course, there are millions of dollars to evacuate you tonight. There was no million, there was no dollar. And so I was in the bed like that. After three weeks, I returned to Kaduna in the back of a space bus because that was the only vehicle that could carry the wheelchair that I was leaving Abuja in. My project, my heroic, angelic project was sitting down there in Zaria and I was heading in the opposite direction, going to Kaduna. Long story short, because this is a whole other kettle of fish for another TED Talk. In the process of this time, I received my healing. I'm a Christian woman, and I believe in the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I received my healing, and this person that was never supposed to walk. So I have not only walked, I have danced, I have jumped, and I have triumphed. Hallelujah, somebody. And so, with these legs that could now walk, I walked into 
the office of the BBC World Service Trust, which was what it was called at that time, later that year. And I said, um, I'd like to do my NYSC year here. And the, I met this impossible woman at the front desk who said, Copper, are you lost? We don't take uh, NYSA people here. I said, Madam, I am coming to work in this place. She said, you need to find another place. Carry your letter, go another place. I said, okay, last, last, it's me and you that will be here. You will live before me. Long story short, when impossible comes in contact with a person like me, what was a lock becomes a key. I got into the BBC system. I had an interview, and they allowed me to come in and do my NYSC. Until today, there is a place for youth core members because Zosa Icha went into that system. In 2010, there was an opportunity for me to write an exam to become an assistant producer at the BBC. They don't do retaining there, so it was you write an exam, if you get in, you get in. And so I happened to tear the exam to pieces and I got in. And um, of all the many problems that there were in the BBC system, the one that was worrying me was the matter of missing mugs in the office. There was never enough mugs for everybody. The office would supply mugs and they would disappear. They would supply again, they would disappear. And so out of frustration, people started bringing in their own mugs to the office. And uh, until the day it happened to me, where a mug I loved disappeared, I, I, I wasn't angry until it happened. And I said, so I'm going to set a trap. And what I will do is that I will make a mug so unique that if we see you with it, we'll know who this thief was. And so I went on and uh, put a piece of fabric on a mug I liked, put some Ankara, put some denim on it, and I put a button on it to make it even more unique. And so when I walked, when I walked in with this mug into the office, made from what was left of my project materials, everybody, it caught everybody's attention. It's how is there this fabric on this cup? She's washing it every day. There's a button on it. She puts it in the microwave. Nothing happens to it. And sure enough, nobody could touch it because everybody knew that this was Zosa's mug. And, um, and where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I actually brought that mug to show it to you guys today. It's the very first piece of Asabara. It was sitting down here comfortably. Somebody came and took it away. Where is it? Where is it? They said we can't use it. Okay, so can we show it at least? And the person who took it has disappeared. <laughs> After 11 years? Really? It did not lost since. You mean today? Okay, so while they're looking for it, if I was going to want to demonstrate what the quality of Asabara art is, run, 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 run. Thank you, Noah. Thank you very much. So this is that first piece of Asabara that was made in 2010 and is still serving today every day in my home this was the beginning of my dream and i didn't know it because i thought i was setting a trap for a thief jumping forward to 2013 still um, slaving as an assistant in the bbc we were at the writing stages of the production of the award-winning radio drama story story and uh, at this point, we would be living in the guest house with the writers, the directors, and the producers. And of course, you know the assistant is the one that is running up and down the place. And so through the day, I would be doing the work of the queen, which was what we called it. And at night, I would be killing myself doing my art because I had decided that December of that year would be the brand launch for Asabara. And so out of concern, the writers would say to me, Zosa, you're doing too much. You're going to break down. You know this whole production is on your head. The producer depends on you too much. You know, you know what? This might just be a bit impossible. Postpone it. But what they didn't know is that when impossible collides with somebody like me, what is a lock must become key. I pushed and pushed until that exhibition happened in December of 2013 and that was there Asabara was officially born. Now going a little bit forward into 2016 was the Tamari festival April 2016 and it was the very first time that I thought it would be good to take these 
art pieces out into the market and see. Now, altogether, Tameri was a mess, but people were very excited to see this new art form come into the market. And um, they took loads of photos, they asked questions. You needed to see how funny adults were behaving when they saw beads and seeds and buttons on ceramic, and they were looking for where the holes were. And needless to say, we sold. We sold and almost cleared that place. But the most important part of Tameri for me was meeting a Swiss lady who was in a booth right next to mine when she said this is fantastic stuff the world needs to see this there's another bazaar tomorrow at so 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 place come and share my table with me and we got there and when we arrived she said in fact move everything off the table use the space and everybody in the tent because the, the bazaar was under a tent. Everybody in the tent was at that table just marveling and wondering about these pieces. Did we sell out? We sold, finish. And after that point, it was bazaar to bazaar to bazaar. And the love for what Asabara was creating was growing. And um, it got to a point where experts were beginning to forward my number amongst themselves. Nigerians were catching the fever as well. And um, I realized that most of these pieces were being taken off the shores of Nigeria. And I decided that I wanted the world to know that this ingenuity came from Nigeria. And so I started putting the Nigerian flag on the handle of every piece. And um, I, it was my desire for the world to know, yes, we are, we are a strange people, but there is much more coming from Nigerian soil than corruption. And so, and so that was where the Nigerian flag started featuring on the Asabara pieces, and that endeared them to people even more and lit Abuja on fire. Between um, April 2016 and December 2016, the name Asabara was going everywhere, and people were wondering, where can we find this stuff? If it wasn't a pop-up market, where could we find this stuff? I was still in the BBC, and I would be running from my office to make deliveries to people. People would be coming to my office to make orders, and it was getting a bit uncomfortable. Towards the end of 2016, the Brexit um, phenomenon began to unfold, and everything British in Nigeria began to shake. And so um, lots of people were having to be cut off from their jobs. And my colleagues thought, ah, Zosa is a star here. Nobody is going to touch her. And um, I, I really didn't know what was going to happen. But when it was time for my meeting, I walked into the office. I saw the country director, the HR person, and a couple of other senior managers. And they said to me, we thank you very much for your service. We're sad that we will be losing you. And I stood up, shook all of them, and I said, this must have been very difficult. Thank you. And I took my letter and put it in every woman's natural pocket. I put it in my bra, and I left. And um, nobody knew that I would be leaving the BBC until the wake of 2017 when I didn't return. The very next day after receiving that letter, I had a bazaar to do. And it seemed an impossible idea that I would be standing in front of customers, smiling and relating to them after having received such news after nine years of service in the BBC. But what I had to remind myself was this. When impossible comes in contact with a human like me, what is a lock must become a key. The next day I showed up at that bazaar and we sold out. And uh, the wake of 2017 saw me not going to my job, but going to work. I sat at my dining table every day crafting these mugs, going from bazaar to bazaar. And I wouldn't be at a bazaar for 30 minutes and would be sold out. And it became, this became the dream that I had of creating something that would outlive me and impact people and touch lives and be something that the world had never seen was coming to be. And then, as is the fate of most wonderful ideas, imitations started to come out. And um, I'm not going to make today about them, because an imitator would not have a story. All an imitator sees is a moving hustle and jumps on it. But an imitator cannot grow and has no value. So if you see any, so the wake of 2017 saw me very busy and burdened with keeping up with customers and clients. But I was raised in a home where we learned how to serve and serve with our hearts. And so as long as my list of clientele was from ambassadors to 
are more ambassadors and other ambassadors and they are seniors, you know. Um, as long as that list was, I was able to serve people and serve from my heart. And uh, it became evident that I needed a place that people couldn't continue jamming themselves in my house or I'd be cooking something and then there's a knock at the door and I look and there's somebody saying, is this where they sell the mugs? Uh, so I decided that I needed to find a place where I could welcome people and host them. And so began my search for a store in Abuja. And when I heard the prices of rent in the places I was interested in, I ran back to my dining table. I said, I will never leave you. We will be together. So I sat at that table a couple more months. But in April of 2016, uh, sorry, 2018, I found my way to the Metama Amusement Park led of the spirit that leads me and I was walking around there and there was a piece of land that kept calling my name and when I got to it I looked at it and the spirit said this is the place I said but this is land what am I going to do with land and he says you will build I said I, I will do what he said you will build I said okay I went to look for the owner of the place I said owner he said mm? I said I'm I'm coming to build something here he said something like what and I explained and he says, so where are your investors? Where are your partners? Where are the people behind you? Or at the very least, where's your husband? <laughs> and I said uh, in my heart that, uh, Oga, look my face very well. Look at me. I'm going to, he said, no, but you know, I don't want to approve this and then it will come and hook. I mean, you're just one you. You know, this is kind of impossible to do. But what he didn't know is that when impossible, comes in contact with a woman like me, what is a lock turns into a key. And then I told him, I said, Mr. Man, I will pay you a holding fee for your land and we will begin this project. He said, okay, if you cannot complete it, we'll demolish it. I said, I'll demolish you before you demolish it. Sign it. And so he signed and we submitted the drawings and begun with what I had in my savings. And ladies and gentlemen, I stand before you to tell you that in the course of 11 months, that place was raised between these two hands alone with no staff, no investors, no bank loan, no nothing. It was sitting down consistently, working with focus, producing this art. In 11 months, no staff, nobody. It's not a, a one bedroom something. It's not a two bedroom, it's not three bedrooms. It is a seven room facility. I was looking for a shop, but God granted me the grace to build this facility. And today, out of this life, seven other people have jobs. And this was what that project was about, that it would be something that would outlive me. It would be something that would grow bigger than me and will never find a place to collect dust in ABU. And so, um, to, end, to end all of this, um, throughout this journey on the road called impossible, I've always had it in my heart and in my spirit that when impossible comes in contact with a woman like me, what was a lock must become a key. But I want each one of you to go away with this, that when impossible has the opportunity to come in contact with a person like you. Give it hell and a reason for you to go through. My name is Zosa Icha. Thank you very much for listening.